welcome to uh, day two. My name is Richard Fisher, broadcasting live from the show floor at Exponential 24. Uh, delighted to be here. Uh, and today with us we have uh, Mike Horton, who's the Chief Executive Officer of GeoNet. And uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, GeoNet is, uh, they say they are building the world's largest GNSS uh, reference network. Uh, I know that because I just read this ad in uh, Inside Unmanned Systems currently. Um, but the reason we mention that is, Mike, GeoNet is unfamiliar to the UAS community, so welcome. We're really happy to be, that you're here. Thanks, Richard. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, it's a pleasure. So um, if you could uh, express to us what the fundamental value proposition is uh, that GeoNet brings to bear to uh, to this uh, uh, drone community. Yeah, so GeoNet is a, is a huge uh, RTK network with over 5,400 stations um, registered onto the GeoNet network, providing RTK coverage uh, pretty much throughout North America and uh, Europe, as well as in a number of developing economies such as uh, India, and we're working on growing it in Brazil and Southeast Asia and so forth. So the fundamental, most basic value is it's really easy to get RTK with your drone, connect to GeoNet, and you'll be have an RTK fix within a few seconds, and you can, you can count on deploying that um, pretty much anywhere. Right, so um, uh, that sounds like a, uh, a, a pretty standard kind of uh, reference network uh, until you consider uh, the kind of underlying business model, right? Which I think is really kind of disruptive. And, and, and I think, uh, from where I see it, that's what's enabled such a rapid and accelerated rate of growth because you have a fundamental, you have kind of a participatory uh, blockchain configuration. Can you tell us about that, Mike? Yeah, sure. So, I, first, you know, to highlight the growth, we're yeah, adding please. about 150 stations to the GeoNet network a, a week. A week. So A week, okay. Yeah, so why does it grow so fast and how have we gone from zero to fi over 5,000 in, in under two years? I think that the core point of that is the participation participatory model and the blockchain yeah. nature of the project. So you can add a GeoNet station, you have to acquire it, but you can add it to the network in a permissionless fashion. And once that station is added to the network and is producing high quality geodetic grade data, you start to earn uh, GOD tokens, which is a blockchain token that's actively traded on a, a number of crypto marketplaces. Um, and so that provides earning power for the, 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 the person who selects to host a station. And that can be deployed really most anywhere throughout the world. There are a few places you can't do it, but most anywhere throughout the world you can acquire, set up, and run a GeoNet station um, and contribute RTK data back to the network and at the same time earn uh, GOD tokens. So all those station operators are actually earning tokens. Yes. And that includes so, and folks that, in, the, in the GNSS community. We have lots right. of operators that are, you know, in the blockchain side, purely in the blockchain side. But yeah. there are many operators that are in the UAS community, in the farming community, um, in the survey community that also choose to operate stations for the economic benefit of earning uh, tokens as well as the utility benefit of having access to RTK data. And it, it seems to me that it's not just this idea of let me offset my cost, but it seems as if it's almost mission guided. In other words, people, it, 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 it feels like you're building a community. And, yeah, it's, it really is a community. It's really building an ecosystem um, where you, you, in a sense, have a, a, a partial ownership or ability to control your your contribution to the community. So if you need reference stations in a certain area and the provider that you have doesn't have quality coverage there, you can add that. So thereby you're helping your business if you're a UAS operator in a certain area where the network coverage isn't great, you can you can solve that yourself and at the same time you know, earn from it, and at the same time realize you're helping your neighbors um, that maybe are using a RTK-based lawnmower, or maybe you know have some other needs for precision GPS data. Or, or you're helping build out the kind of infrastructure backbone that is necessary to deliver these uh, th th this solution to to 
geographic areas that typically have been underserved, right? So Absolutely. nobody goes it alone fundamentally. But you, you, you guys have seemed to really uh, extend that, you know, argument yeah. pretty aggressively. aggressively right. Because when you called me two years ago and you and you can explain this to me, I thought, oh boy, blockchain for corrections, really? It's complicated, Mike. But guess what? Here it is. He's he, you know, GeoNet has 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 conveyed this pretty pretty simple value proposition. So now that we understand the business model um, and and the radical approach that um, uh, disruptors and democratizers like Mike Horton have brought to bear here, um, let's talk. Let let let's get into the weeds on on performance. Okay. Let's talk about precision. Let's talk about convert accuracy. In conversions time, how does it how does it stand up to, to others? So I think that the the stations are really geodetic grade. We have a triple band, uh, triple frequency, all constellation receiver in the stations. So Beto, Galileo, GLONASS, GPS, L1, L2, L5, all the signals fully modernized and very consistent. So one of the nice things about the GeoNet network is it's new. And you know, everybody knows why well, a new house is like everything kind of works. That's <laughs> kind of the same thing. Everything Excellent. is new. So you don't have receivers of you know all different vintages and, and models and makes and firmwares across the network. You really have one consistent make of receiver and one consistent antenna. That antenna calibrated by the NGS and the database. All stations are monitored 24 by 7. They all have precise coordinates calculated through them using we have a nice partnership with NRCAN out of Canada and use their PPP software to position all of the uh, stations and, and get them into their various reference frames that are used around the world. So you can count on the data to be high quality uh, when you log in and use the RTK service. Got it. Okay. Um, what about uh, convergence time? So convergence time is typically, you know, it's going to depend a little bit on the quality of the rover. You know, if you have a super high-end rover, it's sure. going to be a little faster than than a really low-end, uh, you know, but the range GPS, can be but, from you know, anywhere from a few seconds to a couple minutes, depending yeah. on uh, the sky conditions and sure. the, the quality of the receiver. Sure. So um, we're here uh, in San Diego. Geonet, mind the sky.